everybody, this is Richie from the Metal Self Podcast. I'm delighted to welcome members of the All Ireland Project. Here I've got Dara, I've got Carl, I've got Tony and Shannon. Happy Christmas to you lads and great Happy things. Happy, Happy Christmas. Christmas. Thanks. Thanks. No problem. Yeah, yeah, it's great to have you, man. This is uh, this is the last one uh, before the new year, and uh, I'm delighted to, to have it with G. Put it that way. They won't stop annoying me. <laughs> <laughs> Another yeah, we fucking so, album. We were supposed to do one. Um, was it two or three weeks back? But it was just mental. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that uh, we have the time now to. As I said, I was under pressure as well, and it's a big yeah. fucking uh, relaxer now f- to be on holidays as well, not battling this with work and a few other fucking things going on. You know, you're right, man. Yeah, yeah no, fair, fair. It's mental. Life. I know I have work in the morning, so that's pretty shit. But you know, really, yeah, 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 today as well. Yeah. No way. Yeah, okay. The internet doesn't mm-hmm. sleep, my friend. Mm-hmm. The internet doesn't sleep. No, it's it not. It's it's not. not. <laughs> you gotta make that money. I'm off till January the second, which is great. Nice. Oh, fair play to you. Nice. So, um, I'm sporting your lovely merch. I've seen that, yeah. yeah oh, that's very good. Nice. Yeah. I have the CD, the new CD as well. And uh, all I can say is congratulations. It's actually, in my opinion, better than the last one. But I think one or two of you predicted that I'd, I'd, I'd prefer this one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, li- I like it as well, man. I, yeah, I think everybody prefers it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Not yeah. that there's nothing wrong with the first one. No, oh, yeah. no, no, whatever no, no, way, no. Like, whatever way you stuck to this one, it just seems it just landed really well. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. songs were available? Basically, the reason is the first one was pretty much what was lying around for people. There were demos that became songs. Oh, mm. okay, Fair and they enough, were yeah. and they were done quick. And there's there. I don't get me wrong. There is a bunch of bangers on it. Red flag specifically is one that I always go mm. back to and make yeah. them suffer. Is just ridiculous. Tony, you're listening all the time. Appreciate it. <clears throat> but <clears throat> but the thing about it is. <clears throat> the thing about it is like with the second and third album specifically it's very much more what the project was meant to be where it's more collaboration like every song written for it like look there's an outs track on the first album which i really like but me and shannon wrote a year and a half ago yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like it was it was there you know yeah. um, this is much more like people collaborating and letting songs breathe and stuff like that so they're actually like what the project we're actually into the meat and potatoes of the project now and also there's some really weird shit on the, on the second mm-hmm. album too which is great yeah yeah, um, yeah absolutely like the blackest of all black metal songs i've ever written is on the second album, just randomly with with, with tomas like so yeah. it's yeah. it's one of those things where like it actually is what the project was meant to be but then again if it had been one album it would have been there as well but it would have got all kind of lost but having these nice settled out you're kind of getting the different waves of it as we're getting into the feel of it so i'm not surprised sure. people like the second one more personally i listen to it a lot more myself but the first album is still a banger but it is because you know that they were all demos like uh, most of the ones that cj wrote were like demos from like 2015 and stuff so it's like it's mm. all there you know mm. yeah it's interesting that way um so, Dara, can you tell us how much you've raised so far for bernardo's or have you got figures in or- yeah so we we did it we actually gave the money we haven't popped up the social media yet, uh, post yet so you're getting the exclusive we raised in just just about two and a half thousand wow. for so well done, we get lads. we get the check sent over the money did the pictures they're all going to go up on socials relatively soon but two and a half grand um so we're effectively um you know done with bernardo's now uh we're going to do a new charity for 2022 mm-hmm. but That's- yeah like we, we get them the money before christmas because you know, want you, you want to make Christmas an impact week. there just before they've gone in, and when he went, to, myself and uh, self and Anthony Smith uh, went in and did the pictures and stuff like that as well. But they actually went in and told us what the impact we had made, and it was pretty cool. Like you know, there's lots of kids from all the different areas, even some uh, refugees that would come in as well from like Syria and stuff. They would be kind of given, um, they'd be given help as well. So mm-hmm. like, if you don't think you've made an impact when you have Bernardo's literally telling you and what you've done, it's, it, yeah. it's yeah. bizarre. Like there was a bunch of kids that would come in and they were non-verbal communication because for loads of different reasons. And then by the end of the first week, the structure and stuff actually like got them talking and you're like, wow, that's, mm. that's incredible. So yeah, look, as I said, they were, it, it was a great charity. Uh, we were able to give them a bunch of help just before Christmas as well. Um, and yeah, it, look, everyone who bought, bought anything really helped. You know, we Absolutely. didn't keep, we didn't keep a cent of any of this mm. 
So I went He's straight. Just going to do a father tag quote there, you know. Money was just resting <laughs> in my. I have, to, I have to say, I'll be honest with you, right? So they sent me over the the money was resting in a PayPal account for ages, and then I had to send it into my account, and it was the scariest like <laughs> hours of my life. What if I get hacked? Uh, my money it, like, yeah, I'm just like th- this better go real soon. So yeah, no, I was so glad to see that money gone. <laughs> we were, we were getting updates every half hour. It's in my account. It's gone. It's paid. It's done. It's paid. Yeah. Here's pictures. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So, but if anyone does want to see where all this money goes. I actually do keep all the receipts and everything in a, pu- in a public yeah, bin. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, right, man. Unlike the Irish government, we're very, we're very transparent, transparent. <laughs> yeah. and accountable. So yeah. that's the main thing. But everything is there. People want to see it. So. We'll tell you exactly how it is. That's the thing. Yeah, that's true. We admit when we robbed the bank. <laughs> <laughs> and Shannon, Tony, and Carol, I'll just throw it to the three of you. Um, what about we'll say people that you work with are. I, I know friends definitely would know of what you were doing and probably family members as well. But like, has there been any good stories out of it between yourselves personally of people coming up to you saying, you know, fair fucks to your man, respect? I, um, I have a good one for that. Like, I never met Jason from Words to Burn until I went to his gig only recently. I just knew him from online. I knew the band. I knew mm-hmm. Roni quite a while and I really admired Roni as a singer. And I got to know Jason then through through basically through lockdowns and all that, you know what I mean? And obviously you were forced into just using social media all the time. Like, and when we started working on that track and everything, I really got to, to know him and his background, a very similar background and that. So it was cool. Like um, going to the words, the burn gig uh, with the crawling and mm. kind of meeting other people there and seeing people with the Ashari t-shirts and that, and then yeah. people coming up and saying, Jesus, well done, you know, in the project and there so on and so forth. Yeah. I like this song from the first album and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, just kind of like meeting Jason and his, his brother, Kyle, who sang on, on the, the Find Yourself song that's on the second album. Mm. It was really surreal. It was kind of like putting a face to... people. Well, like you are just putting a face, I suppose, to people you've never fucking met, you know what I mean? They're just yeah. a name on a screen and, you know... It's just fucking a bit of a head trip, like yeah. like you were real. <laughs> I think that's something that you all missed in relation to finding people and meeting mm. people in the gig scene. Because yeah. ultimately, they're the people that you'd hope would be buying it and giving you the respect for all your hard work and projects. You use them as a kind of litmus test, you know, yeah. for your material. Yeah. And, and, and that, none but... of you had yeah. that really yeah. up to a certain point until the gigs came back. Carl, yeah. what about yourself? Um, well, I've been like I haven't really been able to go out as Obviously, such. Yeah. But I've been getting like some good feedback online from people who would follow me and uh, and and their band and all their other mm. bands as well. And there are, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lot of appreciation for all the bands now, um, in the states and everything. <clears throat> excuse me, you know, it's oh. a, it's yeah, it's 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 doing really, it's doing what I what I would lo- would have liked it to do, which is what we're trying to do all the time. Like me yourself, yourself. Shine the light on on our on our scene. That's mm. all we all we want to do, and yeah, like I mean, loads of me family about <laughs> thankfully, but um, in terms of work, a lot of people will listen to it on Spotify, mm. but not and that, that, that's great. It's it's supportive, but there's not a hell of a lot of people into metal in my my job. Yeah, yeah, yeah unfortunately, yeah, yeah. but they will listen to the to the albums and. They'll have listened to it and and they understand what you did as well, like yeah. which was to raise everyone, the money. Yeah, yeah, everyone thinks it's fantastic what we're trying cool. to do. Be, like I mean, we're like that. We're trying to do it off our own backs, and yeah, you know, and we're not looking for help really. Like we're we we know we can do this because it's. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest. There's enough good stuff, stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, so yeah, it's, yeah. It's, lots, we we have a good scene here as well. Like people really got scene. behind it there, yeah. and I think after they seen the success of the first album as well, it spurred people on to check out the second one. Yeah. That you know we weren't blowing a load of smoke, um, and that we actually achieved something. And yeah. I definitely feel like what Tara had said there about like raising the money and that. You know, it kind of just felt like, and I guess it's just how fucking COVID has been anyway. Um. It, everything doesn't feel real until something's, I don't know, handed over. There's some sort of yeah. experience. Yeah. I don't know. Like, till I got the, the first CD in, in the door and then got the second one, I was like, yeah. fucking hell, do you know? We actually did yeah. something here, man, yeah. you know? It, it, it's uh, a great point to see it, the actual physical copy. Just physical something. Yeah. It's immortalized now, like. Yeah, well, exactly, yeah. man. They, they weren't supposed to exist. That's the thing. That's why I find mm. really funny about it. I know the, I know the, the mocking stopped. After the yeah. second album came out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, yeah. there you go, you know. And, uh, Shut some people up. It really did, mm. and it was just kind of like, you know, this is why it never existed before because you're too busy being a doucher about it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and it's kind of like, 
we went and made something go and go and do it you know and yeah. mm. and that's kind of what's what's starting to happen now it's great like and that's why we opened the door for album three because it's like look it's still open and there's never this kind of case where people are like oh well, sure did we made fun of it we can't go I'm like listen awesome we made fun of it awesome come on in mm. yeah come on in now and if you want to actually yeah. have something to do with it do it like, they yeah. totally can't because here's the still thing, people like, coming up there is asking. even today even yeah, today yeah. you know we, we got some people in and that's great man because like at the end of the day you know this is what the scene is until until stuff is back to normal we had gigs mm. for what four yeah. months yeah, you know, <laughs> that's it. Gone even, again. You know, and they're gone again. It's like uh, I think I called this. I said this was going to happen. You know, and, and, is, and, yeah. I, and I think it's going to be this way for a while, where we get gigs for about four months. Yeah, and that's it. That's why in Horrenda we did the live stream because it's like we can either throw money into the live stream or hope a gig comes around. That's we starting to float around as well, and you I know? keep hearing it more, more, and more now, where people are trying to up their game as regards to live streams. Do you remember yeah. when um, CJ Limerick done that first? Yeah. I think they were the yeah. first to do it they were, yeah. last year. And we were in shooting a video, Rest of Nation, where recently with Angle, and we were talking about what Horrenda had done. And then we were talking about doing like a complete live stream or chatting with the sound engineer that was in there at the time. And he was like, what would you think? And I started hearing a couple of rumblings now around a couple of venues in Dublin where mm. that seems to be the maybe to go to in the yeah. new year do you know yeah. uh, look it's sad it's not ideal i'm not going to sit yeah. here and, and defend that you know it, yeah. it, it, it is it is shitty you know i've been to a couple of gigs um seated and then unseated mm. See, gigs were weird um <laughs> they were very weird <laughs> but um you know and it was it was great to be there but i'm also like you also get that that fight but this isn't gonna last so what i'd say is look anybody who wasn't on album one or two okay mm. bummer album three still there it's going yeah. to run it for about what, five months. Yeah. Come on, I don't care who you are. I don't care what, what band you're in. It doesn't yeah. really bother me. Uh, just come in. You know, seriously, mm. there's people there who haven't got an opportunity to work with anybody, anybody yet. And look, when gigs do come back, awesome. You'll know somebody. But until then, this is it. This is the mm. only way we're going to be able to interact with each other. This is the only way we're going to be able to kind of make those connections. Because yeah. what we might get gigs for what, four months, maybe next year as well. Um, it's a bummer, dude. But that's the reality. Mm. That's where we are. You know, what about you, Shannon? Any personal experiences with people coming up to you, talking to you about it? Uh, not too much because mostly I've just been doing work and school, and that's in the same building. So, like, okay, fair it's enough. It's either yeah. been I've either been at home or I've been at work. Mm. But my manager does listen to metal, and he does appreciate what we do. Nice. What yeah. we've done with this, he's he's listened to some of the tracks I was mastering, some of them on my lunch breaks, like cool. so, <laughs> <laughs> or not mastering, sorry, mixing some of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't uh, do any of the master. Yeah, man. Jesus, uh, I did a lot of uh, <laughs> fucking around. I was saying that to my managers, like, after the fact and after my stuff was done around and that, and I was saying, oh, yeah, man, I was doing stuff on my fucking lunch break and I was doing stuff mm. maybe during work hours that I shouldn't have been doing. <laughs> do you know what yeah, I mean? Just to get it over the line. Screaming you know? into a fucking mic. Yeah. Exactly, Richie, yeah. to get it over the line. I'm not going to lie. This, sorry, Richie, just to cut across you there real quick. Uh, album 2 creeped up on everybody. Where we're like, <laughs> we said this thing, we're like, oh, shit. That's soon. Oh shit, that's now. So it's kind of like yeah, we're like yeah. gonna run through it. So yeah, that's that's and, way a lot. And you've you've increased it as well. Like album number two is what ninety three minutes compared to sixty six minutes. The, yeah, yeah. The well, just, wait till you see what fucking album three might be, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Album three. Album we still have tracks flooding in for that one. That yeah, album, be... album three is a whole. It's thing. gonna be like three hours. <laughs> yeah, album three is a whole thing by a bit by and of itself. But I we did say we're only doing three albums, so even if it's a double album, it's just going to be the one album. Well, you could yeah. cheat. Maybe you could put out an EP of uh, bonus stuff. There's there's ways around. You could still tell a half truth. There is, <laughs> and what's cool what's cool about this is now like the 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 possibility of what this is now has been shown with music videos so he did unreal music videos yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and it was just like holy shit this has really gotten this is really taking on a life of its own now so you know even though we have what four or five months maybe yeah five months at, at the most mm. for album three um you know we're still gonna have music videos coming in we're still gonna drop singles we might take your idea mm. actually and drop the ep on spotify there's the single so we did kind of yeah. do that to, to, to get to get around the the parameters but like mm. You know, it, it's all to play for at this point, and it's going to be very, very interesting to see what people do. Because again, I said to people, look, if you want to release a video for tracks to go, go do it. This is really kind of like we're not, we're not facilitating this. We're just not saying no to anything. You yeah, know, it's just, just let it in. That, like, that's that's the support. You know, and yeah. that's what's great about this project. We haven't said 
oh, you can't do this. It's like, you want to do it? Go for it. Like Zoe sent me Carl's video. Carl sent me his video first. And then Zoe sent me the video she did for um, Royce, for Royce nice. which is actually a ridiculously cool song. Yeah. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's, all, it's made with GTA's, uh, hmm, GTA's director mode. And I'm like, what is this? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that was mad, man. So I saw cool. that. Yeah, that was yeah. Class, so cool. Yeah. So cool. And I'm like, well, okay, cool. That's a really interesting way to get around the fact you can't shoot anything. Yes. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and it's just like literally or figuratively. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> well, I think there are some actual, there's some literal shooting in that video, but uh, yeah. oh, but yeah, is like... there any costs or expenditures <laughs> that couldn't be avoided? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Please buy things, folks. Please. <laughs> <laughs> like legit. Or there give us money, it. like yeah. legit. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm just wondering, are people under the illusion that you did, uh, you got gifted everything, you got it all no, for free? No, um, no, no. That does, no, 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 yeah. no. You don't make metal to make money. People need yeah. to understand this. If, if, if any of us wanted to make money, we'd join like a wedding band, right? <laughs> you know, I, I, no, I don't t- even think, the, think that. It's just that you break even in relation oh, to no. us and stuff. Uh-uh. No, Not no. Even dude, when we say we left every money, uh, every penny to Bernardo's, Every fucking penny <laughs> went to Bernardo's. <laughs> yeah. Like that, you know, so yeah, we've we've taken on substantial costs, but yeah, buy something, help us get rid of that cost. Yeah, mm, that's get rid cool. of the merch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, one other thing, like Tony, I know you're kind of handling the Instagram side of things. Mm. Um, what about did you get any say foreign journalists, UK journalists reviewing it? Not as much. No, we had well, we had some articles from Poland, didn't we? Um, Poland and Germany. There. Yeah, yeah, that was about it. But like, it was. It's a case of like we were we were doing PR with um, Orn and Overdrive there. Of course, like mm. we were pulling favors from everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So mm. we were trying to do it in a sense of that Orn had done some really good PR for us, but then we were doing some DIY PR. Like Carl was doing a shitload of that as well. Mm. You know. Um, and it was just a case of trying to let the, the music speak for itself and see if, if people picked it up, they picked it up. It's still early days, do you know what I mean? There's so much stuff being fired out on the fucking internet mm-hmm. anyway at the moment. Yeah. Um, it could be it could be a slow burner. It could be a case of that. There could be one song off this album or next album that just takes off, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or floats somebody's boat somewhere and somebody starts writing about it. But any of the feedback we've gotten so far on the music blogs and that has been pretty good, you know? Yeah. 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 It's it's. Just- it's 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 not it's weird because you have all the problems of a band and all the project and all the, without all the yes the infrastructure you know yeah it's like, yeah, yeah 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 it's like it's good way of summing it up actually no literally it's, actually, it's, it's good what Dara said there too and it's it's also the other side of it too is like there's ourselves in the committee obviously pushing it there but then you are relying on other people as well to push their tracks or push whatever and there's lots of people out there it's just like fuck social media do you know what I mean I don't yeah. want to share yeah. I've put my fucking track out there and put it into the ether and that's cool, do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but, you know, Stop I know for myself, like yeah, <laughs> just fucking, just put it out there, man, just share the fucking shit. Like. Yeah. Like, look, no one hates social media more than me, right? But uh, I think I could it, run your clothes. Well, look, I mean, <laughs> well, like, I it is, no, but it is what it is. Like, you yeah. know, you, you do a metal podcast, the only way you're going to mm. be able to reach people. Like, again, this project wouldn't, wouldn't exist without Facebook. Legitimately, yeah. that is that is a mm. you know, cold hard truth, Carl. Yeah, um, <laughs> but it, it is it is a fact. Like you know, and we had some people who weren't on social media, and that created a lot of problems. Um, so okay. the people who were on Facebook they were actually a lot easier to to reach because you could actually mm. reach them, particularly when you can't, you know, um, you can't go over to them or whatever. It's it's one yeah, of those yeah. things where again this wouldn't have been possible in the circumstances it wasn't ideal but social media really did help and you know what's cool about it is if you if you actually do share it it's going to reach a whole new spectrum of people like uh, in my job I shared it and then like loads of these people in like tech offices were buying it in like Texas and yeah. Yeah, it's New Jersey and yeah. we and have like Francisco 500 and sales in New York City alone I think it's, yeah it's wild it's wow. wild you know so again social media it is what it is you know it's like the, the matrix was evil but you got to use it as well to kind of get in there and, and i was even to touch on something like on a uh, metal cell podcast there the recent one for the end of year yeah mm. um and i think it was it could have even been before that and it was like evan was discussing about you know uh fuck man who was the strangers with guns for instance yeah. we mm. were saying about our buddies in that band right and the lads just do whatever the fuck they want and it's great like and it's mm. 
that's one way of doing social media. And then there's the other side of the stuff we do, we'll say a rest of nation, which is very calculated and fucking yes. specific on whatever it would be. And the thing is, is that like, it just depends on what type of fucking band you are. Do you know what I mean? Mm. One thing is acceptable for one type of band and one works for another. And that's <laughs> yeah. kind of how it is like. Yeah. But the thing that wrecks my head is, is sometimes you feel like you're annoying people where you're like, I've done this thing. Well, I'm hardly just going to be like, I've done the fucking thing and I'll just leave it there. Yeah. And it goes nowhere. So mm. you constantly have to bombard people. And Evan was on about that where yeah. he was maybe saying, you judge people and go, ah, here, like, another fucking post from this fucker about his vinyl or his, his whatever it is. But when it comes around to when your band has to release something, haha, you fucking realise that you have to, yeah. you have to play the game and you the, have to the only thing it. Tony, like, the only, <laughs> just to back up what Tony says, that is very true. The only thing I won't do is invite people. Yeah, I don't. I refuse to do, do that. Because that. yeah. that's, 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 a, that's a bit too far. That's like showing up to somebody's house and being like, Hey, will you buy my thing? It's like, trip people. Yeah, you get to people to it. So I just, I won't, inv- I won't invite people. But... Just put me page up there and say, yeah, here, and then here you go. Yeah. yeah, but if you, you like, like it, you like it. You do have to get out there and share and all that kind of stuff. And the traction has been really, really good. Like obviously, yeah. band camp and you know you hit that huge spike. But then yeah. it's weird. It's like this consistent spike now that's going through. The first album kind of had the spike, went like yeah, this, yeah. and then that was kind of it. Album two, particularly with all the videos and stuff that's come out in the singles, have just been like straight up all the way through. So it, mm-hmm. it's really cool. Like, it, yeah. like I would say, if you haven't listened to it yet, and you've or you've only heard the first album on Spotify, look, mm-hmm. first album's great, but yeah. you're missing out on this whole second album. Will that be on Spotify soon? Not soon, but it will be next year because yeah, yeah. you still need to get sales from that guys come on like, yeah okay cool all you right know. so we, we're going to start playing um we'll do a run through of it really uh we'll play a section off each song uh That's the, great. the the first one carl you're involved with so it's um the cold hard truth the one um, the cold hard truth can you hear me mm-hmm. absolutely yeah okay and um it's under the name for mickey vermicious yeah vermicious. We, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's to do with um Fishes Canids, it's in a BF. I think it's in a in a Roald Dahl book. I think Hytham came up with it. Yeah, okay. I was just like, I like that, so we'll just use it. <laughs> and the reason being is because, cool. I know, yeah. That's like we were just having so much crack with with making the sound that we decided we were going to stick together and you know start writing some more music and all that kind of stuff. Brilliant, great. So, that's that's a that's a collaboration that should bear fruit maybe next year, or the year after. That's what we're hoping for. Yeah. Nice. And, um, it, it is going to be like a side project, obviously, because of our, all of our other projects mm. and bands and stuff. But we liked the, the dynamic. We enjoyed, we had a great time doing the video. Yeah. And, and like that just solidified our decision to, to stay as a group. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Oh, that's great, man. Okay, yeah. we'll give it a listen to here. Then it's just the cold, hard truth, the opening track. Yeah. job singing there and that man it's fucking, there's some serious riffing there and of course the rhythm section alone Jesus Christ man yeah, it's a serious lineup and uh, look I'm, I mean I'm, I'm, now, I'm just pushing high them now to start bringing in more riffs because <laughs> I, uh, he's like oh yeah I have some I just never record them and I'm just like well just I don't know play them with your phone and them, them, yeah, yeah. Really? so that's the I'm, I'm waiting for that kind of th- different uh, approach that high them brings to, to where Ed Brings Ed is with me and Two Tails and Iona Dead Cult as well. So, um, yeah, he's a serious riff moister. He really yeah. is. Yeah, and yeah. Of course, 
shout out to Alan as well, who uh, mixed yeah. it, Al, uh, of Zahora and Tom as well. So that's and he's, the he's in the band as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's cool, man. Um, the and next, sh- the next song is "Born Under a Bad Sign." Um, uh, any of you involved in this, or any of you? Want Tom to was in about? that, wasn't he, boys? Yeah, Tom was in that. So, yeah, yeah. It's just a lethal track. Yeah, um, I think. Is Jack in, involved in that as well? Jack Penders, by any chance? I'm not Jack too sure. Jack makes it. Yeah, Jack so makes Tom, it there. I knew Jack was in it somehow. Tom's on uh, vocals and drumming. Vocals. Connor, James on guitar. Cormac mm-hmm. Jordan, again bass. And bass, Stephen yeah. Ratz. Rahman? Yeah. Rahman. So, if you, do you know Ratz? He used to be in a band called Dichotomy. Um, kind of okay. tech death band in Dublin were fucking amazing, man. Savage and band, yeah. they packed it in years ago. It was actually around that era when I met Carl way, way back, man, like 10 years, mm. 10 or more years ago. Mm. But um, they were just fucking lethal. So it's deadly to see rats on this. He does a lethal solo on it. It's just yeah. un, un, underrated fucking guitarist. Like he needs to get back in the band somewhere. But um, yeah, th- the fact is, is that the vocals on this, from what I remember, um, Tom had like a lot of these ideas, I guess, in his head. And he was like, fucking no better man to just execute my own ideas than my fucking self than yeah. trying to off shoot them to somebody else, sing them this way or that way. And Jesus Christ, did he deliver it? Yeah. Unreal. Yeah, unreal. That's actually the, like a, a hard job. I'd pick one song out of all of these for uh, the bit. The Metal Cell Best of 2021 uh, compilation that will be out next week. Nice. And I, I picked this one because um, it's sick. It's lethal. Savage. <laughs> Fucking, it is lethal. Yeah, we'll give it a listen to. Fucking guitars like an angry wasp, and the bass. <laughs> mental, mental track altogether. Oh, real, isn't it? The vocals are just oh. brutal. You can hear um, Tom's kind of style that he brings to Zora mm. in there, that more yeah, yeah. shouted vocal. But then yeah. when you hear the gutturals or whatever, it's just I was like blown away. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. he texted me the time actually that he had just finished recording, and he says, "Man, do you ever just record something and just be like?" grinning from ear to ear like that is class <laughs> John Lane, you're proud of yourself he's yeah. like you can't wait till you hear it the time, yeah, signature, the time signature on that as well are super weird <laughs> oh, yeah. it's all it's over the place <laughs> mental yeah and yeah. I think that's why I like it it's just so different and yet it's kind of something that it would, I think it would appeal to a lot of people that are into dead metal black metal fucking black and trash you know yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I know Carl you wouldn't be too much into that but you know, I again, like it. Yeah, not as much, but like, yeah. yeah. I mean, Morbid Angel are one of my favorite bands, yeah, for example. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a, Jesus, you can't, <laughs> you can't deny good music. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, kinda, so go on, yeah. Seth. No, I was just going to say it kind of appealed to me, and that kind of like, if you ever listen to Vader, mm. Polish mm. Band, like, it's that just filth. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, Dara, this is your one, Far Garta. Um, yeah. How did it come about? Um, was it a new idea, fresh idea? or Yeah, just... Tom- Tomas actually, um, this is like the first track that was submitted for the project, period. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Um, okay. And Tomas is just unreal. Mm. Such a talented young fella. Like, yeah. Like, ridiculously talented. And um, he's like, here, I have this idea. And he sent it to me and I did bass and vocals and guitar. Um, but we did it in a weird way. And when I was mixing it, I'm like, oh, we can do this. And it was kind of like, it was a different way to the way Shannon and myself would work. Um, so it was just kind of like, right, I'll do a mix, do a mix back and forward, and um, it just turned out to be like, I think the blackest black metal track I've ever done. So it's like, <laughs> it's like a lot of old, something, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a lot of old horrenda, but then like a lot of new, 
a uh, lot of new kind of post um, post black metal elements in it too as well. And mm. Tomas is just an incredible vocalist, really good drummer too. So actually, he broke his leg, so I think he had to program drums in this. He broke his leg around the time. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no man, it, it was a very natural uh, collaboration that every time we kind of added bits to it, it, it kind of extended out more and more. But it's very it's very different, but also um, kind of cool to kind of go back into that headspace of like uh, writing old horrendous stuff. Mm. And um, yeah, it's just it was cool to to jump back in because obviously where Horrenda is now is so so different to where it started that it was cool to jump back in, but also do the dual and vocals kind of thing, which I haven't yeah. done since me and Shannon did um, back in the day. So oh, yeah, was yeah like it was cool. Twenty sixteen. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus so, Christ, yeah. lads, that's nuts. <laughs> Five years ago. Wow. Well, six years now, really. Yeah. yeah. Mental. Okay, we'll give it a blast. Far Gort, that this is track three. <laughs> Difficult to pick a section out of each song, lads. You've no idea. <laughs> no, that's sure fair. madness. That's yeah. fair. No, like w- particularly when you're mixing that. Like it's funny. I had to like unlearn a lot of the good habits I had from mixing because when you go back to mix that stuff, you're like, how do I make it sound? <laughs> how do I make it sound built <laughs> again? Yeah, <laughs> just like yeah. But uh, no, it's pretty cool. The sections are are mad. You're doing great so far, dude. Yeah, <laughs> picking them um, out. They are wild. This album is fucking wild. It guys. is. It it's is. And, and it's, it's great fun, man. That's that's more importantly if you're a, a met, an avid metal or listener like I am. Anyway, so this is a really interesting track. Uh, Find yourself, uh, Tony. You're involved in that with Jason. Yeah, Mother's man. Born. Kyle Christie is doing vocals. Yeah, on it as well. And it that's was it, man. It was all just three of us so Kyle is is Jason's brother mm. so Kyle was a big influence on Jason as a musician um, I guess he was the resident metalhead in the house Okay. and Jason kind of watched his brother being in bands growing up and that's where he kind of meandered into music so this track here is like a combination of I guess Gojira meets Deftones mm. and a kind of there is a bit of a kind of blackened kind of vocal on it there from, from Kyle um, when he had sent it on to me it was basically I didn't know where I was kind of going to fit in on it do you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah, it yeah. was sent over and it was like me and my brother have this track been building up bit by bit here's some demo vocals here's whatever and instantly in my head I just kind of clicked in on this Chino Marino from Deftones style vocal mm. and I said I'm just going to go with it so I went and recorded my part and I sent it back to Jason and he was like, man, it was like you're in my fucking head mm-hmm. and just knew what I wanted. I didn't even tell you what to do. I just sent it to you and said, right, you just do what you want to do. And he's like, that's what I wanted. And I was like, cool. So we'll just refine it more and more as the track went on. His brother wrote more lyrics and fleshed it out a little bit more mm-hmm. and just maybe little timings and things like that they wanted just tweaked. So I went in, laid it down, and we sent it off then, and we got it mixed um, by a guy in Mammoth Studios, I think it was, and then it was sent on then to get mastered on our end. Yeah. But um, such fun, do you know? Um, the who, guys was, like, who was Ma- Mammoth? Is it Catan? Mam- it? Uh, yeah, I think that's who it was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did a solo on it as well, or, or lead. He may have, if, his, if mm. his name is on it there, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't know who he is, in truth. Yeah. Too. Um, He's, he, I know the guy plays guitar um, I had nothing to do with him other than I just knew that this guy mixed the track and mm. I looked up his page at one point and he seemed like a really accomplished musician yeah it's, it's another cool aspect of it we'll yeah, give it man. a listen uh, find yourself then track four <laughs> Wake up, wake 
Yeah, I absolutely love that track. That's a real grower for, for me. Sure, man. The more you hear it, the more you enjoy it. Hopefully yeah. Deftones don't sue me. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of the tracks on this have like the earworm quality. Where yeah, the yeah. more you listen to them, the more they yeah. kind of grow on you. Yeah, Rise, was that, Rise was that for me and Simon Carroll's one as well. Ah, it just happens. It just, mm. Yeah, it's mad. Like. Yeah, uh, the next one, uh, there's a bit of an all-star quality about this as well. There's lads from Words That Born Again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dead Label, uh, Mick Hines, Ronnie is involved. He's on vocals. See? Oh, he's on chorus. And Shane McMahon. His mm-hmm. accents in the workplace. Tell us about him. Do any of you know of him? Anybody else want to take it? I know this I was know kind of late one saying. that came in. Like Roni, I knew he'd, he'd done the vocals on it. Um, Mick, I think it was a kind of a latecomer to the to the project, wasn't it? With Dead Label, I think. Yeah, no, this this one was, was submitted at different stages as well. Yeah. But it, it is a great track. But mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was in Rome and I had to like, swap out one of the masters when I was there so oh. yeah, this, was, this was like right to the wire yeah, yeah. Right to the wire yeah, yeah yeah but no it's it's seriously good um, again again, like when you're you can see people coming and going as we get deeper into the album and these kind of really cool uh, mm. collaboration tracks pop up like I said the all star kind of thing and that's what you want so yeah it was great to have everyone there and see the names come in as well but yeah thank god the wifi improved in Rome or this one of the other like legitimately okay so this is hollowed out <laughs> class man I, I chose that section again because of Aideen's vocals on that fantastic mm-hmm. it's lethal and there's a great thing about like doing a track like that and a risky thing it's like you're Irish and you're doing a predominantly <laughs> kind of very metal like new metal new metal yeah. and it can mm-hmm. go fucking pear shaped it <laughs> well, was here, not done right but here's the thing right? that was done right but here's yeah. the thing uh, you, like a lot of people in that group would be the same age as myself and Tony yeah, yeah, we grew up with new metal. Yeah, you know, so it's like, of course, it's there somewhere. We just hide it very well. Or you yeah. don't want to do it because you, you think, know what? Oh, yeah, don't be fucking cringe or something. Yeah, but yeah, when yeah. you get the right people and you do it right, man, it's fucking deadly. Like yeah. it, that was unreal. That's like something that was right from POD two thousand five, yeah, 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 and it's yeah, unreal. Exactly. And, and yeah. people need to realize: look, it's only cringe if you think it's cringe. Go yeah. off and do the best you can. It's like, mm. you know, man, and that was great. When I heard that, I'm like, wow, that really sounds like it's pulled directly from 2005. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. And that, that, that's a perfect example of an earworm there, as you were saying. Yeah, that, absolutely. That song. Yeah. Especially with, again, great vocals from Aideen. Could be on Tony um, Hawk's, actually. Could be. Yeah. 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 You could yeah, probably, probably bang that on, yeah. Yeah. Now, this track for me, uh, Immortal, sums up the whole project because it's just <laughs> a cacophony of everything that's good in relation to what you all have contributed. Um, Carol, walk us through this before I play it. Okay, well, this came from the brain of Shannon and gave us very little kind of direction. <laughs> like, this is what I kind of want, but you can do it. Like, you know, so uh, myself and Hoytum jumped on this because we just knew it was going to be a, a, a mad fucking song. <laughs> Yeah. So we had we had great crack recording the vocals that day, um, because we we wrote the lyrics on the fly basically, and it's just first time I've kind of written, I suppose you could say comedic vocals lyrics. Sorry, and uh, Hyde was just he kind of followed suit as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, when you hear it, when we when you you were hearing pieces of it put together, yeah, as you say, it is the epitome of what mm. the project is. Mm-hmm. You were hearing pieces put together. And 
Yeah, it was. Pro- it's. I, I love the track. It's such a fun track. Yeah. And every time I hear it, I always remember the the fun we had recording it, and and the fact that Shannon was happy with what we came up with. What, that was just brilliant. Like you know. I remember Carl texting me and going, "How the fuck am I going to write this <laughs> one? I've never written anything like this in my life. It's pure madness. <laughs> Where do you start? What if we're not seeing me, grand man? Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, I mean, it is a. Like, especially when you're so used to your vocals, Carl, in relation to other stuff, and then you, it yeah. works so well with this. Like, um, I mean, that's it. Of... Like, yeah, we were, sorry for cutting in earlier there. Like, yeah. we were like, what can we do to add to it? And that's when I start going, oh, and then I was like, do that and learn that again and learn it again. And we're like, this is brilliant. Where are we having like little kids? Tony, you've seen us in the studio. Yeah, yeah, oh, like, God. This is brilliant. Oh, I can't wait to fucking hear this. And then we'd be listening to just the, the, the vocals on their own. And yeah, it was. <laughs> Like there's the fucking Irish um, diddly idol stuff in it. Uh, and of course, hmm. you know, there's definitely part of my soul that fucking loves jazz. I don't care. And yeah. I love good saxophone and all that. Yeah, yeah. And man, when I got to the end of that track and I heard the horn section, I was going, oh, lads. <laughs> just epitomizes, just, just epitomizes <laughs> what goes on in Shannon's mind. And I'm telling you that now because... Nothing, I, I, everything at the same time. Habanero sauce. I'm terrified <laughs> considering, like, we're going to be working together in the future. I'm terrified we're going to have to fucking sing too. Yeah. <laughs> terrified but happy as well, like, so. The best part for me about making that song was when we brought the drummer in, because he's a jazz drummer. Like, ah. he's he's doing, I think he's doing a master's degree in jazz. Well, Chris, out of, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, who's he with, um, Red um, Sun, not Red Sun Lord. No, no, um, yeah, uh, I can never remember the name. Upon him? Eponym, yeah. Eponym. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lovely guy, Chris. So he did the drums on that. Um, yeah. yeah. Keith... And he was able to one take the whole song. Ah, Jesus Christ. What? We did, no. we did two takes, Jeez. but like he was able to play through the whole thing in one go. That's crazy. Um, we'll give a shout out who else was involved. Jack Prenders, um, obviously yourself, Shannon, uh, Keith of Horenda. Yeah, he Chris, was playing bass. And the Galway Cairn. Yes. <laughs> Who's yeah. the Galway Cairn? <laughs> uh, Karen de Burka. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, is that yeah. what he's credited as? <laughs> is that what he's credited as? That is brilliant. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. <laughs> I'm glad you I just didn't write perfect. it. I didn't write people it. like to proofread everything before yeah, we do like, anything. Yeah, I'm just so like, like, clear it with your band. Yeah, clear it with your band as you want to be credited. That's unbelievable. <laughs> I love it. The one that's that got great. Away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't Jesus. remember his name at that particular moment. I was away from my computer, so I just messaged Dara, like, it's the Kieran from, uh, from Galway. <laughs> Galway Kieran. <laughs> oh, that's well. his name now. That's his name. That's his name. <laughs> legally yeah. changed. Oh, um, <laughs> okay, uh, the seventh track, Frey Lies, another very interesting one. Uh, Dara, can you talk us through that? Shannon, you were involved in mixing it as well. Yeah, governments are terrible. Mm. Particularly oh, ours. Yeah. Like, that's what the song's <laughs> about, you know, and it, it's about just the fact that we were lied to consistently, even before the pandemic. Uh, and that's what it's about. Like we actually, I wrote two songs that target Fine Gale and Fianna Fáil, and they're on both albums. Nice. Um, they're scumbags, and they, you should hate them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what the song's about. But uh, yeah, like I have to say, like I, I wrote two Machine Head tracks. And I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, what do I write about? Oh yeah, we have terrible government. <laughs> uh, that's what, of you, Darren. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, and that's what, what the songs are kind of about. Uh, really, really cool um, vocal performance from Aaron on this because, uh, like, yeah. 
we did we did a, it was weird when you're working with somebody who well, like i've been working with iron for what, like six years yeah. <laughs> so it's like and when you're used to them doing a specific performance which is just horrenda um you're like okay so we went in and we, i was like right go nuts and he's like right i'm gonna try this so i wrote we wrote lyrics and i was like yeah man they're grand went in and did it and it was class you know but like and he just it's completely different to what people would expect them normally to do which is great but what more interesting the iron can just one shot it right but what's weird about it is how this track kind of came about as far as the writing so i don't think mark's on this is he he might be i don't know he is uh, yeah he is he's on yeah. base yeah, base, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, myself, Keith's brother, uh, Anthony, and Mark went in and were like, right, we got to re-record this. So I went in and recorded the whole thing. Uh, we did the two tracks back-to-back, this and another one called uh, Lies Damn Lies. That's on the next album. And um, again, it's, you can judge what it's about. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, it was actually funny because we were trying to figure out a way to kind of get this properly put together. Because when you're, when you're not writing a track like this, it can kind of run on. So we had like two drummers involved to actually yeah. kind of get this to get this kind of sorted so that's why there's two drummers credit on it. it's a fair play to both of them for, for knocking them. out the park there yeah from Psychosis and Cahill yeah the, like reason. the two like uh, Cahill actually like uh, arranged the track and then Tom went in and, and recorded it clearly because the original tape just wasn't okay. it wasn't exactly there you know mm-hmm. but uh, this was a huge huge product and then um, oh my god what's his name does the solo uh, oh, Cormac Hmm. Cormac does a solo and man he, he does an incredible solo like I always forget how good Cormac actually is on guitar and they're like holy cow yeah. so yeah it's a really kind of cool collaborative one this one took a while to kind of properly get into place but then once it was there it was a brilliant job so yeah, yeah I hope you guys like it and again you know I always question your government hey <laughs> Still yeah. know it was Aaron. <laughs> you still know it's Aaron, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah it's, it's class though, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Like we're like whenever you record Aaron, you have to be like, right, Aaron, stand stand away from the mic there. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, like, it's, the it's, oh so man, good. he's just so and loud. He's so loud. So yeah, loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Class. This next track is actually another one of my favorites. It's Morrigan. And um yeah. Mo was on this, uh Veronica of Neon mm-hmm. Empire, Zoe, Kavanaugh, and Julia. Like Julia singing on this, and it's not something obviously that uh, Red Sun Alert would do, but mm-hmm. man, fucking hell, she fucking does a great job in this. Mm. And you want to take take this? I'll, I'll speak briefly on it. Um, yeah. I I love this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I even said it to, to Julia. I was like, your vocals are unreal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this whole track is just brilliant. Like this, is how I discovered Neon Empire as well, and then I went in and Neon Empire like banded the year for me uh, with my discovery. I think they're great <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah no the girls absolutely just knocked it out of the park on this it was one that was supposed to be a single uh i think it is still in singles listed on spotify but we just weren't able to get there with a the video for the time being i don't know if they're going to do one in 2022 but um man it's so good it's so good and it, it's 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 straightforward and it's not at the same time like mm-hmm. it's a straightforward metal song but then it has so many layers to it and just great performance from everybody so mm-hmm. this is brilliant uh this is a standout like pillar of what this project is as well. Yeah. yeah. And Josh did a fucking great job as well mixing it. So shout oh, out man. to himself. Yeah man. Absolutely. Okay. What's
such Rachel. a fucking great groove to it as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. man. It's brilliant. Ah, fucking Indust- man. industrial groove. Yeah, it's <laughs> brilliant. The girls just knocked it out of the park with that one. As I said, it's one of my favorite, right, man. favorite ones on the album. Um, this is a great one, and Carol, I'm gonna see if you want to talk about it, man. One for the road. It's a. Uh, it's not a one. Got- yeah, that's got Jason doing the uh, lead vocals from Creep, hasn't yes. it? Class. Uh, oh, yeah. gee, I mean, that kid is one of the best. I think and my, one of my favorite vocalists in the country, yeah. and yeah. Uh, I've worked with him a few times. And we have a track on album three, mm. which is interesting. And um, <clears throat> but yeah, like everything about the song is just it just spouts out uh, attitude, you yeah. know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just a fucking rocking track. It's a great track, you know. Um, and you can hear a lot of their influences as well, which is really cool. They're, yeah. they're subtle. They're not in your face. There's subtle influences there that you can go, no, I know who that band is. And Tony, what about it yourself? Um, and the vocals all day long and the harmonies and everything yeah. like that. It's just mm. blows everything out of the park, man, for me. Like, <laughs> I just love that one. Something's done well. And like you said, like it's a subtle influence. But at the same time, for me as a singer, I'd be like, oh, that is what yeah. it is. And I yeah, won't yeah, say yeah. it's anybody. You can make up your own decisions as to exactly. what it is. But you will know what they listen to growing up, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's fucking cool, awesome. man. So there's a load of lads. Uh, so Dave um, from Thoughts of Room, Niall from Thoughts of Room, and Jimmy, Thoughts of Room, mm-hmm. Liam Nocter from Creep, Jason, as you said, Carol is singing, and mm-hmm. Michael Wall did lead guitar. And who's, any of you know Michael Wall? Just throwing it out there. No. Okay. Um, and Neil O'Brien uh, mixed it. Uh, great. Mm-hmm. Great, great job. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that is just like my kind Class man, um, ah. track what a loop. What what a loop. Loop. Just real. <laughs> There's a lot of catchy tracks on this album. There really yeah, is. Man. Oh yeah, man. And that's what I said. That it's it's the earworm album. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like mm-hmm. it gets it. But what's mass? What sorry? What's gas is you can hear. Um, you know the the real heavy side of Irish metal, but then also we all really like new metal at the same time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just the just Americanized there. metal. The Americanized, and, and yeah, that, the yeah. Americanized metal. You can just hear it there as well. It's like. It is kind of funny at the like same I time. I can hear course. Alice in Chains there. Absolutely. I can hear fucking yeah. Black Label Society. Yeah. There. Corey Taylor. Like, Corey, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. You can hear it all, all day long. Like, Stone it's Temple brilliant. Pilots. Yeah, yeah. man. Just like, it's there. fucking, it's just it's class. class. Yeah, it is So class. good. So good. Uh, Rise, who wants to take this one? Zoe Kavanagh and Tommy Duffy um, wrote the lyrics and Lisa and Tommy are singing. Uh, yeah. Damien is on drums, Keats on bass, Cormac is on guitars, and as I said, Zoe's, Zoe's on keyboard. I was just going to throw it out there. Is it my understanding that Tommy's from, um, fuck, The Grudge? Is it the Tool tribute band? No, it's Cynical. Is it? Yeah. Or was he, he not in, in I don't know, The Grudge? Because there's a part familiar, of me, yeah. like, I really know him to fucking see from somewhere and I'm pretty sure he was in the grudge <laughs> to yeah, 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 tell us, tell us know. I think you could be right man because the, the name the name is wrecking my head very familiar yeah, yeah, yeah he's some so vocalist I ain't gonna look that up while we're here because it's been wrecking my fucking head yeah, every I time his name comes up going, fucking hell how, do, how have I come across him I am him? pretty sure man he is because yeah. like, if it is that's why he's so fucking insanely good 
But yeah. you know what's su- you know what's super odd about all this kind of stuff, lads, right? The fact that like you make these discoveries on the on the album or yeah, yeah. it, and like Tommy's just like, well, man, that's one of Tommy, I'm sending you a friend request. Exactly, man. <laughs> couple of weeks before this comes out man you see it. <laughs> by then, i'm fucking cancelling it man right <laughs> you're just sitting there going like you know poaching people going oh yeah, yeah uh shannon what about, what about this song for you um um this is either my first or second favorite song out of all the tracks that have been submitted so far wow and I'm, I'm not sure which because the, the top two are very close yeah. the next one i think is going to be on album three and it's yeah. by the Galway Kieran. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the this Galway is like Kieran. neck and neck with, with uh, his. And yeah. it's just it, top notch. Like everybody did just an amazing job on it. Mm. And the know. video was unreal Perfect. too. Oh yeah, the video is amazing. Yeah, yeah, so we yeah, did yeah. a great job with the synths and the video at the same time. Like, Okay, we'll have a listen yeah. to it there. And Tony, get Googling. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely right. so fucking good man <laughs> oh man I tell you I have to you know this is it again like our, our scene is so talented that people just need to not be douchebags about it and just mm. understand that one you are as talented as as we say you are and two stop knocking everything because you for some reason people need to stop Irish people need to stop doing that we need to get confident yeah. it's like yeah. what's that book from the Simpsons get confident stupid <laughs> stupid <laughs> and three, yeah Tommy was definitely in the grudge yeah. there we go had to be yeah, there we go. had to be had to be yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, knew. I, I would have known him through that rather than cynic called the truth yes you know? I have to say no man like just when when, when that when I actually listen to that track first time it's like you do get the goosebumps because you're like oh well that's really mm-hmm. good mm-hmm. I think did Josh mix this as well no I mixed it you mixed it oh well yeah, fair yeah, play Shannon yeah. Oh, yeah, that's no. one that I was doing on the uh, lunch breaks. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you wouldn't think it. Tell your teacher. <laughs> oh, man. Unreal. Unreal. Uh, this is uh, an interesting track, the Safe Haven one. Um, the vocals are, I'm not sure in relation to, it's something different and it's 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 going to have to be played a bit more for me because it's not that immediate, but that's not knocking it around. It's, uh, you know, um, it's Anthony Lindsay of Shadowlands. Um so he did the vocals on it. Ed from Two Tales, Carl yeah. guitars, Cahill Murphy on drums, Dave Murphy from Dead the Leveler on bass, and it mix, was mixed by Ed Brophy. And if you knowing about this track, yeah, uh, well, I like. I mean, my involvement obviously is with just with Ed and uh, oh, and uh, Cahill because Cahill's in the Slayer cover band with us, right? But um, I just know that they were putting this together, and they got Dave, who is Cahill's brother, in. To, like another, this is another real collaborative okay. ep- episode, you know. Mm. Uh, that's about as much as I know of the actual process, though. Tony, were you trying to get in there now? No, man. Uh, just scratching me out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll give this a listen. It's, it's called The Safe Haven, and uh, The Safe Haven is track 11. Yeah. 
I listen to it again, I'm actually fucking liking it more. That vocal delivery is just so unique, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. different from what you've heard previous with all the other songs, you know? Which which is a good thing, it's I like think. Ghost yeah. if they were metal. What? It's like Ghost if they were actually yeah, metal. There's, yeah, yeah. there's a bit of candle mass. There's a, there's a bit of yeah. nice stuff going through it there, man. And as I said, that's definitely... An exciting one for me. It's a grower. Um, well, put it this I, way, I, I would. I didn't expect Ed to write that. You know? yeah, it t- 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 know. One thing that could, that guitar verse line sounds like the Forbidden Band that you're not allowed to mention, or it's yeah. get banned on you. If you get banned on Facebook. <laughs> Okay. No, the, the forbidden black metal band by that one guy who burned all the churches. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a okay, whack it out off it. <laughs> now, the next track is the, oh, here we go, Sisyphean Task. Um, Sisyphean, is it? Sisyphean, is it? Sisyphean Task. It's fucking closer than what I would say there, Richie, <laughs> yeah. so you're all right. Yeah. Sisyphean. Yeah, Sisyphean yeah. Task. Yeah, yeah. it's um, basically repetitive tasks. Uh, it uh, comes from some Greek story about a the god. Titan, the Titan who had to put, roll the, yeah. the boulder up, up the hill all the time. That's yeah. right, yeah. Um, who wants to talk? Do any of you know anything about it? Jamie from Aborted Earth is involved in it. Dahi is from I think Tom Rome. is on it, is he? Uh, I think Tom, Tom is on drums, team. correct, yeah, and Connor and think, is on guitar, bass, and synths and vocals as well. Connor M. James from I knew that one came down yeah. to the wire, didn't it? it that did, was yeah. another yeah, one. Tom, Tom was team leading this one as well, and they weren't sure if they were going to make it, but they got there. Okay, I'm yeah. glad they did. It's lethal. <laughs> it's a fucking it's a great, great track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Again, trying to find the right part was uh, difficult. <laughs> this, but I picked this section in it. Man. <laughs> Stop. that's something man I'd hear like do you know and don't hold me to it but like if you were going to see some a band like fucking Opet or Behemoth and there was Behemoth an opening band off, like yeah. that yeah I'd be fucking all over that do you know what I mean there's some yeah. tracks on, on this album and on all the albums in general that I wish do you know you could and I see poor, yeah. Poor, yeah poor Tom was fucking drumming on half of them so I mean <laughs> but you know but if they'd ever become actual bands or anything that would be fucking class like you'd yeah. love to just see see it take shape for material yeah. like that even uh, this is another real good one uh, The Paradoxical Man any of you want to take this? Yeah. Another Down to the Wire one yeah I was on this I was on this so, so there is a story um, okay. but I'll keep it as brief as I can so <laughs> uh, the lads were like Let's do a slip. The the Galway lads actually, uh, pretty much all the Galway lads are in this, and they're like, "Here, let's just do a, let's just do a Slipknot track." It's like, "All right, rad." So we did one, and uh, it was initially, it wasn't exactly up to the scratch initially, right? And I was like, "Look, the track is great. Let's go up to Josh and record it properly mm. in person." And I messaged Josh and I was like, "Hey, man, we're going up to record it." And he's like, "Right." <laughs> Went up and you know we did a session, and when I say it was the most fun session I've ever had in my life as far as recording and the easiest session I've ever had that's not a word of a lie oh. it was so fun uh, the lads are, are gas crack um, we went in you know it was, <laughs> they showed up on the second day to do bass obviously because I wasn't writing I literally just play bass and um, I showed up and I'm like okay I'm going to need to click on this so me and Josh were just sitting there and he's like one going this is weird watching you play bass because obviously he just know me from playing guitar mm. and he's like 
why are you so good at bass? I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> this is weird. But I, like I was actually, to play. I like to play. I was actually playing your bass, Tony, that I yeah. ended up owning. And um, yeah, I was just playing along with it and it was just great. And we just did it to the click. And I, as you could see him mixing the track, it became better and better and better. Like when I say this is a Slipknot like track, we mic'd up a, a ladder for percussion and everything to get that proper. Oh man, I bet the show though, yeah. It was Whopper and um, it was super cool. And the cool thing about it is like, this is one of the tracks as Tony was saying, this has now become a band. So the Mm. lads were going to do a a four track EP or something next year. And uh, you know, it's great. And as I said, it was the easiest session we went in to write um, some uh, Sefer and War of Attrition. I think uh, the lads, that's their band. Yeah. And um, Owen Clark as well, the DJ and effects. Yeah, yeah, I've actually never met him. He's the okay. only one that wasn't there that day. Okay, but uh, yeah, and then we did the gang vocals, and Mark showed up from Horrenda mm. as well, so he's there. It was just one of those really cool collaboration things that I didn't think we'd be able to get with COVID being a thing, mm. where you can actually go into a studio and do it. But we just managed to get it at the right time. And when I say it was down to the wire, I was like, lads, if we don't get this done in these two days. It's not happening. Wow. Went and killed it. It was. It was awesome. And, uh, it was I, basically where we had like a version that was good, but it yeah. could have been better. And we said, yeah. with the aid of an actual studio, yeah. what this, if we can just fucking dig in and get the boys into the studio and guaranteed we'd knock it out because there's a makings of a really strong song there. Yeah. Right? And that's what happened. And, so when the guys and, went to the studio, they just came up with this. Uh, look, I knew Josh would be the man for the job. You know, he, he was all over from day one. And mm. uh, I was like, look, got to go in and get it done. This is the time frame. Went in and killed it. And I, I, I'm. It was weird to play bass because I play bass to a bunch of tracks, but it's weird to actually go into a studio and play it in like mm. such a long time. So it was a. Uh, it was fun to go in and do it. And you know, I, as I said, it was the most fun experience I've had in a studio in years. So cool. okay. So this is the paradoxical man. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking Panzer division going through a small village. <laughs> oh man, that's the ladder Christ. for you. That's the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and I was fair, play, fair play to all the lads. Like genuinely, it's uh, it was really cool to because again, like uh, well, being in being in Dublin mainly, you know, you might get down to Cork, you get it to Belfast. Mm. Really, very rarely you get over to Galway. Yeah, it's actually, you know. Uh, unless you're in the Siege of Limerick or something like that, you would very rarely be over that side of the country. And it was just great to work with all the lads. I have to say, shout out to, to Aaron, like who was there. Not not horrendous Aaron, other Aaron on this track. Aaron O'Neill, is it? Yeah, yeah. man. His vocals are on. <laughs> yeah. Real. No, is he scared. from um, I thought it, I, I met him in Limerick once upon a time, so I thought he was a, a Limerick boy, but maybe he, he is. He is a Limerick, Limerick boy as well, yeah. 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 I think there, there's like that crossover. And and Jura and all that. Yeah, yeah. fuck me, yeah. man. Yeah, well, man, great. like it was weird watching him do the vocals, right? It was like, how is he? How is he doing? <laughs> you know, when you're just watching someone do vocals. You're like, yeah. how are you doing that? It was, it was, it was mad. But yeah, I've, mm. I've seen two bands he was in. I think he was in in Zephyr. Um, he was in yeah, Zephyr, he was yeah. Zephyr yeah. and I thought yeah. he was fucking lethal. Like he had something about him. 
Yeah. Um, and that's class to see him in a proper studio there because I don't think they've ever recorded outside of home. Mm. Um, so Jesus Christ, like I think he's he's found his match there with um, yeah. the likes of Josh. Some, yeah, I was just going to say, and you've got yeah. someone like Josh to push it even yeah. that bit further. Um, the next track, please, someone have details on this. Uh, okay, or, go on, go for it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know any of these people. So you uh, wouldn't. You wouldn't okay. because Valcada, it was actually the name of my first real band. And okay. then the keyboardist moved to New York. Right. And uh, he, he did a symphonic metal project okay. called Valcada. And he actually messaged me, go, here, can I have the name? I'm like, yeah, but I'm stealing the riff from one of the songs, which ended up being Nerve Gas, right? Oh, <laughs> that was the trade. So this, trade, is, man. this is the That's connection, right? Yeah. This is the connection. So, uh, you know, that band lives now through this project, but also through his project and then also in Horrenda. So it is kind of going on. But he met, I messaged him. I was like, listen, man, we're doing this. Do you want to come? So I have, I have a look. I have nothing. I'm nothing ready, but I want to give, you know, do you want Tower? I'm like, fuck yeah, that's an amazing track. So he actually recruited a bunch of like professional musicians from like who would work with Nightwish and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's a great track. It's very different to everything mm-hmm. else that's on the album. Yeah. But it's like, you know, he is one of the one of the best Irish musicians that come out of the country that nobody knows about. Yeah. And the whole point of this is to not only just be a scene thing, but also get that out there as well. So I wasn't going to throw up the opportunity. Uh, if you like symphonic metal, you're you, you can't go far wrong. <laughs> yeah, you can't go far wrong checking out Falcata in general. But um, holy hell, yeah, it's a good track, and uh, it was great to have him on and to, to talk to him. What's his name, Dara? His name is uh, Rob Rob Hanley. Oh. Rob Hanley, okay. And uh, yeah, such a such a cool guy. He was very surprised that I reached out to him. But you know, I reached out to every band that I was in. I'm like, let's do something. Every band, and I've been in loads of bands. So I just reached out to everybody. And I was like, I want to work with everybody, and that's what I want to do on this. I want everyone who's ever been involved in Irish metal to be on these albums because it's only fair, you know. So that's what I'm saying. Tour album. Is he under a different name called Oda Cade? Is it? Yeah, yeah, that's his that's his stage name. I'm glad you we, yeah. we clarified, <laughs> clarified yeah. that. I'm just because I don't see any fucking. No, no, that's not, not on no, the birth no. <laughs> It's not on the birth <laughs> <sorry. laughs> No, no, no. no. <laughs> well, okay. he is home for the, he is home for the holidays, so I sent him out with an album, and he was all happy about it. So okay. <laughs> there you go. So this is Tower. Yeah. <laughs> vocals and that is just are just it's ridiculous epic. it's all yeah. ridiculous it's like proper epica kind of stuff you know fuck's sake carl would you um have much of a love for that um yeah it's, respect it's, it obviously yeah, absolutely my the god it's mind, mind-boggling that yeah listen to wouldn't be a huge fan of the symphonic thing no it, i'm not saying it's bad obviously no no but no. that particular track is actually it, it again it's another airworm actually mm. you know yeah cool uh the last track get a grip did that uh, move up and down in relation to the whether or not it was an ending track or Shannon? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, I am muted. Yeah, uh, okay, no good. <laughs> no, it is the ending track on the CD anyway. Okay, yeah, it so, is. Yeah, that's. I'm wondering, like, uh, was it always the ending track or had it moved up and down I the list? Th- 
I think it just got slapped on there because it was the last one to come in. I think I finished mixing it the day of the, like, everything oh, has nice. to be done the day we're printing it. Okay. So I think I had it done the day Dara was sending the files for mastering. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Dara, walk us through it. Yeah, well, I think Shannon's going to talk a bit more on this because um, basically, Shannon's oh, like, you, hey, you I did want the bass on it, actually. Yeah, Shannon, I did the bass on it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shannon was like, I want to do a machine head, another machine head track. Do you want to okay. play the bass? Yeah, so Shannon's the one to talk on it. Yeah, of course, Shannon. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So basically, I, I just write songs all day if I'm not working. So I was sitting there and I was like, what have I not written in a while? Machine head. So I started writing it and went, wait a second. Dara, listen to this. And Dara was like, okay, this has to be on the album. <laughs> and uh, I was like, okay, well, we don't have time to go out and hunt down a vocalist, but I live like five minute walk from our, the rehearsal room. So like, I was just, I'll run up there and write something on the fly. And I couldn't think of something deep to write about or anything. So I was just like, you know what? Rob Flynn is a cunt. I'm going to write about that. <laughs> true. So true. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's not many would argue against that at this point. <laughs> <time. laughs> uh, sorry, Rob. Brilliant. Uh, love the music. Hate the person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll give it a listen. That's classic. Man. This is Rob Flynn. It's a <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Smith did guitar. Yeah, as he, well. was, he was the second guitar for it. Uh, where's Anthony from? He's a uh, Keith Porter. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's the last track, lads. Um, anything else you want to say in relation to the the obvious? Go out and buy the fucking thing. Please buy it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and if you buy it on Bandcamp, you get the digital version as well, which has a. Uh, Two mm. alternative mixes or two alternative masters. Oh yeah, the ABBA and, stuff. Yeah, and then the ABBA stuff, which is you know hilarious. Yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no. It, it look as I said, you know, if you haven't bought it yet, do because like that really but, but helps. You're going us. to regret it, man, if you don't. In relation to a physical copy, anyway, you know, you should at least have that. No, yeah. I was just gonna, I was gonna say like you know when we say this stuff is limited, like it's it's not being re replenished. Like once the mm. merch is done, once the CD runs are done it's and gone. they are limited to a hundred, they are done. Like that's it. Mm. We're going to keep obviously the band camp up, um, you know, indefinitely and Spotify will be Spotify, there. But, yeah. Yeah. But like the, but the physical is, media and merch. Yeah. Like it's, it, 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 it's extremely limited. And um, also as well, like, you know, it's relatively fair, like album two, because, you know, we some people were like, oh, it's only one album. It's like, okay, so we tried to be fair, and it's up at half the price of the first album. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, there's a discount code which you can use. Well, actually, I don't think when this goes out, you'd be able to use. It, sorry, mm. um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like, look, there's a bunch of bundles up there. Um, yeah. with with some of the merch we have left after the Christmas season's over, we'll be, you know, just swapping back to what we have. But uh, look, as I said, the merch is great. It's super high quality. We we really did not cheap out on this, mm. and uh, you know. Once it's gone, it's gone. You know, yeah. and it, it, it's cool to have. I don't think this is going to be the third album. Is probably going to be the last time this is done. Well, it's going to be the last time it's done for most anyway. We'll be doing it anyway. Yeah. 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 Um, and and that's it. You know, and the second album, it's full of absolute bangers yeah. and some really weird stuff too. But you know, that's 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 also their bangers as well, right? And so, there's a gig in the horizon as well, a support slot. Right. So, at the moment, there is one confirmed gig. Okay. And that is with Firewind. 
on the and first of May. Yeah, first of May. Yeah, and at the moment that's the release day for the tour. Though we're working on there's another gig that's almost confirmed and that we can't talk about that just yet. Yeah, and then there's another enough. one we're going to try to do to coincide with the release of the documentary. Mm-hmm. So you know we're, we're we are kind of like right, even though basically you can kind of judge how gigs are going to go you're going to have those three to four months where you kind of have to do everything or else it's going to be gone so we're kind of coordinating around that but at the moment there's at least one but scope for three depending on what happens okay excellent good news that's carl tony shannon and daryl thanks a million for coming on the show thanks for having thanks us on Richie. absolutely appreciate it yeah, appreciate it bro said, we said it enough go out and buy the thing and uh it's all going to Bernardo's. So support your local metal scene. Thanks again, lads, and uh, happy new year to you. Happy new year, buddy. Cheers, Cheers man. Yeah, cool.